All right, we're back today, and we're going to solve the Caesar cipher solution. Now, we're going to kind of do this in a couple of different ways. Let's see how it goes. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to say i got to open the file. Now, we've actually predetermined the name of the file. It's right here. Uh, it's called secret.txt, and it says the gun is in the toilet. That's the secret sentence that we're going to encrypt. It doesn't have to be one sentence. It could be as long as you want. And uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say input file. Actually, that's not a good one because that's if, right? How about file for input is, uh, or, or, or we could do like this, input, input file. That's better. Input file is equal to uh, open, and we'll go, uh, secret.txt and we'll open it for reading although we don't have to specify reading explicitly because that's the default. Now uh, I will dump everything in the file into a uh, text variable, uh, a string variable so I will say uh, text equals uh, input file dot read so now I have read the whole thing, and now I'll just go input file dot close. Now, listen, I don't have to do it like this. I could have done it, I could have done it like this as well. I could have said with open, and we could just copy this, and with open as input file, then I would say uh, text equals input file dot read. Now I don't have to close it. Okay. Now I'm going to iterate through the text. Uh, and so I'll say for letter in text. And, and at this point now, um, I should actually open the other file for uh, writing. So I could say with open secret dot ink for encrypted. Now this one I do have to explicitly state for, for writing and this one I could say for out file uh, sorry as out file and now I'm going to iterate through text which I've already stored um, and now I will say um, for each letter I want to encrypt it now I have to kind of decide on the encryption and l let's just use like a simple thing let's just say it's five so I'm going to shift it by five. So what I would say here is I would say I would go ordinal of the letter, right? And um, but I kind of I kind of want to uh, add five to that in order to shift it, right? So I'm going to get the letter, the ordinal number. I'll add five to that, but then. I want to change it. I want to change that, okay, into a. So I could just call this, you know, the um, encrypted letter. So I'll go. How about encrypted letter is equal to that? Then I want to. But actually, that's not the letter. That's the encrypted number. So really, I have to actually convert this back into a character. So I can go chr, now that. And that's going to be my encrypted letter. OK? And then I'm going to say, uh, and I'm now, now I want to, well, it depends here. How many times do you want to do this? Do you want to write to the new file um, all at once? or do you want to create a new string and write it 
or sorry, let me say that again. Yeah, do you want to write to the new file letter by letter, or do you want to just create a string in memory and write the whole string at once? Personally, I think it's better if we write the whole string at once. I don't want to keep writing to this file letter by letter, because that's going to be a slower operation. So I'm not going to do it this way. It's probably better if I actually did, took this out, put it down here, and now I will select this whole thing here, and I'll go uh, Shift Tab and move it over. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a encrypted text equals nothing at this point, but I do need a string variable. Then what I'm going to say is I'll say I want to now append to this string variable. I'll say encrypted text is equal to encrypted text, which at this point is nothing, plus, so I'm doing string concatenation uh, of the encrypted letter. Okay? So when this loop is finished, everything will be in encrypted text. Now I can go ahead and write that to my, so essentially I'm doing all this, this for loop in memory. Now once that loop is finished, now I can go ahead and write encrypted text to my secret inc uh, file. So now I will go out f dot write and I'm going to say uh, encrypted text. Okay? And so at this point I'm done. I don't need to close any files because I'm not, I, I didn't do it like this. I used with open. Uh, this should work. Um, let's just put a little print here just so just to give us up uh, because nothing's gonna output so so let's just say finished let's now uh, run this okay so it ran let's take a look at what's in the file now let's go open and uh, secret dot and there it is um, the question now is, does it work or, or did it work properly? We don't really know until we decrypt it. So um, we can go back and I'm actually going to write the same program again. We can actually, here, I can open a new file and we'll call this one uh, Let's just come over here and let's copy everything in here. Well, not everything, because I don't want that first part, because it's just a comment. And we'll just copy everything and put it in the new file. We'll go like that. And now we'll save it. And we'll save it as uh, we'll save it as decrypt. .py. Okay, but what's going to happen here is we, now we're not going to open the text. Now we're going to open the encrypted as input and hold on a sec. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change this program to work to decrypt. And we kind of have to change the variable names because they don't quite make sense in this case because we're opening the encrypted file for reading as the input file, which is good. But what isn't good is that this isn't really text, it's encrypted text. And now we're not going to be creating encrypted text, we're just going to be creating plain text. So we'll say letter in encrypted text and then we'll say now the plain text is equal to and here's the difference now instead of adding another five we gotta go the other way so we have to subtract five and then we're gonna say alright well now the plain text is going to be uh, equal to the plain text that we had from before plus the letter not the not the encrypted letter then we're gonna open now the text file for writing as output and we're going to now not write the encrypted text but rather just the plain text and we'll say finished so 
I mean, it's basically the same program. The only real difference in it is this minus sign here, which used to be a plus in the encrypt uh, version. So let's save this. And now, before we run it, let's uh, come over here and let's uh, let's clear that for a second. Let's now delete the uh, secret uh, dot text so now we don't know what the original message was we do have secret dot ink which is the encrypted version and so now if we go back and run it f5 and it says it's finished well let's now go and take a look at uh, if we have secret dot text and sure enough, it worked perfectly. The gun is in the toilet. So we were able to encrypt and decrypt using this model here. Um, so what I kind of wanted to say, though, is that really this isn't a very, uh, OK, so this one, let's say, which one is this? Let's say reload here. It's, it's going to be the same thing, because we deleted it and then recreated it again. But notice these two programs. They're essentially uh, the same thing, except for the minus sign. Seems kind of you know, uh, wasteful, in a way, to have two versions of the same program, which are doing the same thing except one has a minus sign and one has a plus sign so in this specific situation I think it would be better if we change this decrypt and encrypt into one program and then we used command line arguments in order to uh, achieve our encrypt or decrypt and also we could also use command line arguments uh, in order to specify which file is to be read and which file is to be written to. So uh, let's try and change this program to suit our needs. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to change the program such that we only have one program, but the way I want it to work is if I type in Python 3 and I'm going to call it uh, caesar.py and then I'll say encrypt. If, if I want to encrypt, I'll have an E and if I want to decrypt, I'll have a D. And so let's just say I want to encrypt. I'll go uh, secret.txt and change it into uh, secret.encrypted. Now, in this scenario, all of my arguments are going to be command line. Um, and here's the other cool thing. If I'm going to do all this, then why not take it one step further and specify the password? So I know there's no password in this case, but if you think of it as the shift value being the password, then instead of your program always shifting by the same amount, uh, you could say, for example, something like, um, you know, there. So five. So, so sysargv1, so zero is the name of the program. One is encrypt or decrypt. Two is the shift value. Three is the file you're transforming. And four is the uh, file that you are creating. In this case, it could be decrypting or encrypting, depending on what this is what the first argument is. So if we go back, so we just got to remember what these are. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So the files are three and four, and one and two are encrypt and the shift value. So let's go back here. And now let's, uh, let's copy this text here. Okay, we can copy that. And let's make a new file called caesar.py and we'll paste it into here. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I will say, instead of saying open secret.txt, I'm not going to do I'm not going to do that. First, obviously, I'm going to be using uh, command line arguments, so I'm going to have to import uh, sys. Now I'm going to go sys.argv, and if you remember, the one that I'm reading is going to be three. Okay. Um, also, maybe we should put a little comment here just to re remind us how to use this thing. So we'll go Python 3 uh, Caesar.py encrypt shift value secret.txt secret.inc. And then obviously the other method, the other way to do this is the, the opposite way, right, is to go decrypt. And, and, the, and the, we're not going to specify them. We'll always assume that the decrypt is going to be minus and the encrypt is going to be plus. Um, so that's not at issue. It's just the shift amount. In this case, though, this would be the uh, encrypted one, and then this one would be the plain text one. Okay? So because when you decrypt, you want to create the plain text one. So now let's go down here. So that's just to, kind of to remind us. We could actually incorporate this into the program to kind of give the user a uh, heads up on how to use it, but that's beyond the scope. We're not actually trying to publish this thing or anything. Uh, we just we're just it's just a little assignment for us to learn how to do things. So um, yeah, sysargv3 therefore is going to be the file which we're going to open for reading and instead of calling it text, because we don't really know if it's going to be text or encrypted data, let's just call it data. Okay, and uh, let's call this, um, how about we call this string uh, transformed text, or maybe that might be too long. Transformed, maybe that's too long. How about, uh, how about changed? Okay, and I, I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking of a nice variable name. But in any case, I'll call this character in, in data. And then I'll call this, uh, how about a uh, new character? Okay, and now here's the difference though. Is it gonna be, pl is it gonna be plus or minus? So I'll say if, sys.argv uh, 1 is equal to encrypt, then we're going to add new character. That's right. On the other hand, uh, Lf sys.argv1 is equal to decrypt, then the new character is going to be minus 5. Okay? Uh, now, the other thing we got to kind of take care of is. Um, how do we concatenate to the new, to the new, uh, to the change string? So, uh, how about we go ch data, change data, or how about how about since we're using new, how about we go new data? That's a better variable name. Okay, so we'll go new data is equal to new data. plus new character. OK, that's good. We have a little bit of consistency there. Um, yeah. And it, so it's, it's basically taking into account if it will encrypt or decrypt. Now, the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this name. And this is going to be sys.argv. If you look up here, it's going to be this one. And that's one, two, three, four. So uh, we'll come down here and we'll put in a four. 
And now we're going to say uh, write the new data. Okay, and, and that's it. Uh, I think it should be okay, except, wait, no, there's something we totally, totally, totally missed, and that is the five. That is not going to be hard coded anymore. That has to be, um, so we're going to have to delete that and we're going to have to put in sys.argv. And that's, that's the second one, so that's sys.argv2. And we can copy that to the same location here. The problem with this, though, is that it's not going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work is because everything from the uh, command line arguments are going to be strings. So therefore, we're going to have to change it into an integer. Because we're doing integer arithmetic here, or addition, and we can't add a string. We can't subtract and add strings and integers. So we're going to have to change this to an integer as well. And so now, yeah, just, you know, as I said, all command line arguments are strings. Now that works fine when it's a file name, which is expected to be a string. And the D and E is fine as well, because that's a string as well we're checking for. Notice we're checking here uh, in quotes. But the five is, a, uh, we're doing arithmetic with it, so we have to change it to an integer. Okay, at this point, uh, that's good. And let's save it. Now, we're not going to be able to run it from within our uh, IDE here, because we're going to have to use it on the command line. So, and that's okay. That's, what, that's why we did this. So let's now come over here and let's, um, let's actually, um, here, hold on. Let me delete uh, secret ink. And do I have secret.txt? Yep, okay. So let me now type in uh, Python 3 Caesar encrypt, and I'll change the encryption password here. I'll make it seven. And I want to encrypt uh, secret.txt into secret.enc. And it fails. Why do we have a failure? So let's go and take a look at our program. And we have a failure on line uh, 12. Why? If sysargv, sys.argv1, oh, right, that's an assignment. That's not a test. I forgot to put double equals. I should have recognized that much quicker. But anyways, let's save it now. And let's try it again. And I get another error. It says, let is not defined on line 11. Yes, we changed it. OK, uh, yeah. That's because we changed it to char. And let's change this one as well. OK. Hopefully, that's OK now. Well, I guess we'll save it and try again. Keep trying until we get it. OK, so now it says finished. Um, at this point, let's take a look at what secret.inc is. All right. And let's see if the opposite works. So let's get rid of the original. And now let's run the program again. But this time, I'm going to say decrypt. And now I'm going to say change secret ink into uh, secret dot text. Okay. And when I run that, it says finished. And let's see if it worked. It did. So there you go. So the program works uh, rudimentary. I mean, it's obviously it's not you know production ready or anything like that. But it does what we want it to. And we were able to achieve uh, our objective of simply having one program for encrypting and decrypting, and simply having a command line argument uh, like this with a D and an E. And the nice thing about this one was. So whoever encrypts it 
is going to have to type in this digit here. So this digit is essentially your password. It's the amount you're shifting it by. And whoever decrypts it is going to have to know that shift amount. So that's how Caesar Cipher uh, works. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, we'll see you next time.